What's going on guys? Welcome back to this video. Today we're going to talk about What's going on guys? Welcome back to this video. Today we're going to take a new track from Hack the Box. The track name is Intro to Printer Exploitation. So this is what we're going to do in the upcoming videos. We're going to make a video from a Hack the Box and on the next video, we're going to make a video from Try Hack Me. So I try to mix uh, videos from both platforms. Um, so what's going to be the methodology? The methodology will be we will take the videos from Hack the Box. Or we will do videos on Hack the Box. Mainly, we will do Hack the Box tracks. Okay. So as you know, guys, Hack the Box platform is mostly focused on the offensive uh, side of cybersecurity. So it's mostly offensive security. You get to do the pen testing most of the time. So we will focus the pen testing side from uh, we, will, we, will, we will do the videos from Hack the Box concerning the offensive security. And when it comes to defensive security, we will do the videos from Try Hack Me. Now, sometimes we might be mixing depending on the contents found in both sites. So one video from Hack the box and one video from Try Hack Me. So today we're going to take the first track we're going to take is enter intro to printer exploitation and from Try Hack Me we're going to most probably I'm going to start with intro to cybersecurity path. Okay. So one video from here and one video from there. And hopefully we're going to finish all the tracks from Try Hack Me and Hack the Box. If you have other suggestions, kindly let me know in the uh comments all right so the first thing we will do we will see here intro to printer exploitation and that's the first challenge is a challenge it's not a machine it's only a, a small challenge so in intro to printer exploitation we get to um, experience what it looks like to interact with a printer from the penetration testing perspective so what we aim to find when we pen test a printer so printer at the end it's a device found on any network so you have to take it into your pen testing scope if required of course by the client to uh, in, into your pen testing uh, engagement so basically if required in your scope uh, the printer might be a device or an asset that you have to uh, conduct pen testing on so you must be familiar of what are the steps what are the tools what we what are the things we want to get access to what are the uh, are we required to exploit specific aspect of the printer or to interact with the printer maybe uh, most probably we we aim to extract the saved uh, jobs or in progress jobs the files that uh, getting printed uh, in the printer sometimes we might be we might, we might aim to get access to the file system of the printer so most probably the printer is a device that prints documents right it pr just prints documents so sometimes it's used to send emails like if you use the scanning option some printers have the ability to integrate emails with the printer so you can send emails directly from the printer when you scan a document so getting access to a scanned document or a printed document is one of the top priorities when you do a pen testing to a printer so there is that framework so there is this framework i found on github the name is pret it's a printer exploitation framework and as for the description it relies on the communication method deployed on printer to, uh, to make the user able to interact with it so basically as you can see currently post the script PJL and PCL are supported, which are spoken by most laser printers. These are considered as languages that printers use to interact with the user, process requests, and accept commands from the user. So when we conduct pen testing, we aim to use these languages to interact with the printers. Sorry. So the main idea of this framework is to facilitate the communication between the end user and the printer. Okay, so that's the main aim here. So when we interact with one of these languages, uh, we basically we aim to, as you can see, capture or manipulate print jobs. So when you print a document, it gets sent to a queue of printing jobs. It, this queue of printing jobs contains a list of documents that are getting printed. So 
some documents get printed some documents don't get printed depending on the status of the printer and how uh, huge is the print list uh, the, the, the print queue so basically getting access to that queue is substantial to getting access to the information or documents being printed so capturing or manipulating print jobs accessing the printer's file system if you want to go deep and further into exploiting the printer and revealing the weaknesses you may aim to interact with the file system and memory or even causing physical damage to the device most probably if you are doing a pen test engagement you're not gonna need to reach this level causing physical damage to the device this is a black purely black hat technique or black hat objective so the installation of this framework is fairly easy all you have to do is just to clone this repo and then to start the tool so basically that's the usage let's now let's see how we can use this framework in this challenge all right so we switch to the virtual machine okay let's go back so basically as you can see when we start the instance we're given an IP address along with a port so I'm not gonna deny <laughs> I first tried to visit this in the browser, but it didn't work. I also tried to telnet or netcat, connecting connecting by netcat or telnet to this address, but also it didn't work. So basically what I did, since it's a challenge that is clearly aimed or tailored towards printing, uh, printer, pen testing, so I directly used the PRET framework or the printer exploitation framework. So how do we start this tool? PRAT and we can use the help menu. Dash H and we spawn the help menu. Now parsing and deciphering this help menu is fairly easy guys. So basically as you can see we have dash S. Most of the options you might not be uh, you, might, you might not need to use the, uh, these uh, options. Um, so for this scenario we're going to use the target and we choose the language of the printer but it doesn't harm to get familiar with all of these options so dash s for uh, dash dash save verify if language is supported so we can use this option before engaging with the printer for example if i want to know what is the language the printer is using i can use dash s option so if we say prat dot py dash s okay and then i use the address which is the target here let's first put the target okay the target consists of an ip and a port the port is important because it defines what is the how we how do we communicate with the printer so basically it's very clear that the printer is exposed right to the public or to the internet uh, or somehow inside the network so we interact with the printer on the sport normally most printers you can access them using using a GUI interface supported by most browsers but in this scenario we are accessing the printer on port 30601 so let's see here dash s or let's use the first language ps and dash dash safe So now it's checking the support of the printer uh, for this language, PS. And as you can see here, IPP support not found, HTTP support not found, SNMP support not found, PS support not found. As you can see, this, pr this printer doesn't support these protocols. It means we cannot access the printer uh, using the browser, nor IPP, or we cannot access it uh, it's not enrolled in a network management you cannot see it in the firewall or any device and it doesn't support ps as a language what matters to us in this scenario is the language so ps is not supported we proceed to the other one other language so we go back to the tool and we see we have postscript pjl and pcl if you want to uh, take a look at more details you can click on the link and you can see a PDF document opening explaining how every single language works and what it is, the components. If you want to take a deeper look, 
I see. Ah, okay. HP PCL PGL reference. Print your job, language, technical reference. Matter. This doesn't matter for us now, but if you want to uh, get a deeper look, you can take a look at this document. Okay, going back. So instead of PS, let's try PGL. PGL support not found. Okay, the last one was PCL. Ah, choose from, we cannot use uppercase. Okay, so PCL. I Apparently there is something wrong because it's impossible that the three languages or the three modes of communication are not supported. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna uh, spend more time on the dash dash safe. Let's go back and experience every single one of them individually. So the first one was PS PostScript. Now we're trying to connect with the printer on the sport, and the connection established because originally the printer is listening on the sport. Now. How do you know if this is successful or not? We will get a shell on the printer. That's what the tool does. If the connection was successful, and if the language option or the language preference or the language we chose here was the correct language, we will get a shell like this one. So if we type help, we see a list of the comments that we can use to interact with this printer. Okay. So these are the supported comments to interact with the printer. As you can see, we have successfully connected to the printer on this mode or on this language, PS. All right, let's proceed. Now the channel's objective is to go back. I lost access to my computer and need a document urgently, which got stuck in a printer. Can you get me the document? So apparently we have to get access to the files that got printed. Now the files that were printed, they can be found in the saved jobs, okay? or in the file system. The easier option is to choose the saved jobs or the saved documents, okay? We're not gonna get access to the print queue because this document has been printed. It's not in the queue anymore. The print queue contains the list of the in-progress jobs, the, in the documents that are getting printed. If you want to get access to a document that has uh, been printed and, and stored, we're going to get access to the file system, the storage, I mean, or we want to get access to the saved jobs. So let's see if we can find these somewhere. So we have these commands. We have ls. So let's reveal the current contents of the directory. As you can see, we have connection delays. This might be to some connection issues, or it could be that we chose the wrong mode. Let's give it five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, command execution failed. If you get this, it means that the language you chose was not the correct one the printer is using. So let's exit and use other one, PJL. All right, ls. Perfect. As you can see, these are the directories we found. Now we have PGL, the language, post script, save device, and web server. So let's get access first to save device, see what's inside. LS save jobs, that's what we want. LS save jobs. Wait. Okay, CD now, save jobs. In progress, keep job. Now, in progress is the printer queue. We don't want this. But it doesn't have to take a look. So, CD in progress. We have HR policies, not PDF. Note the size, 41. And then we have, let's go back and go to CD, keep job. Nothing in keep job. So, only in progress. 
going back with CD. Now, if you want to download this document, we can easily say get, or how do I know it's get? You can go back to the help menu and we have this get. It's the same command we use when we want to download a document from an FTP server. We use get, right? So let's type get hr and we have downloaded the document. Now the next step is to explore what we have just downloaded. If we open the HR policies, we will see a page 64 encoded document or encoded contents. So to decode this, we're going to use page 64. So open ls. All right, so cat hr all right and then when we cat hr it will the output will be the contents of the document which is base 64 we want to pipe this as an input to so another command base 64 dash t now until this point the doc the contents of the document has been uh, sent to the output as base 64 and now it got forwarded to another command, page64-t, which decoded it, decoded the content into plain text. Now the content is in plain text, but you want to save it somewhere, right? So we can use the arrow to send the output to a document of our choice. I use HR decoded. When we execute this command, we will have a new document named HR decoded. If you open the document, we can see a flag indicating that we have successfully cracked the challenge. And we can see other contents as well, intro, remote working guidelines, so on and so forth. This is not everything about printer exploitation. We have many videos ahead to explore different ways of exploiting and pen testing printers. But today you got the first method. Here you go, guys. I hope you liked the video. And of course, I will see you later.